What's the best way to warm up before a leg workout? Coach Nick Tominello shows you right here. Do them in order and you'll take care of all the important components of a good warm up. Activation, mobility, and the last one, potentiation. So NT loop, mini box walk. We go three to four steps to the left, six to eight total steps forward, three to four steps to the right, and six to eight total steps backwards. Make sure, get a little closer, make sure that when you do the steps, they look like this. See my knees are out, not like this. Same thing when you're walking front to back. You always want to have that knee directly over the toe, both front leg and back leg to really get those hips activated. I like to do the box walk, walking in all different directions because it just adds an additional challenge to control, use your hip adductors to control your knee outside of just moving laterally. So NT loop mini hip external rotations. I'll show you from a few different perspectives. So I have the band around my ankles, my fists in between my knees, and what I'm doing is essentially that motion here. So if you're looking at me from the top, that's what you'll see. So from this side, I'm 90 degrees at my hips, 90 degrees at my knees, head can be up or down, your preference, and I'm working here. Now, I have three different NT loop mini band tensions, but if this tension is a little too strong, very easy, and I only have one band with me, I can just simply move the band a little higher up, get a little bit more leverage on it, bring the band closer to the pivot point, and I'm good to go. So. Make sure you work on your hip internal rotators, range of motion as far as you can with the band and the fists keep everything sort of hip width apart. Great way to turn on your hip internal rotators, which are extremely important and often underwork, underworked in our regular activities. This is an NT loop mini reciprocal hip bridge. Reciprocal because I have one leg hip extending while the other leg is hip flexing and both of which are working against the mini. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's a great way to activate your hip flexors on the one side and your glutes on the other side and the nice thing is is that people have a tendency when they do hip bridges to overuse their lower back which brings this leg down. But by working against the band, not only am I engaging the front of the hip on the front side, on the elevated leg side, but it will force me to use my glutes more on the other side. Now the big thing here is when you set this up so the band doesn't slide, especially if you have tights on, even though the band has a good grip, make sure, make sure that you have it underneath your knee, the crook of your knee. So when you pull forward with this one, it stays anchored. If it's underneath the crook of your knee, it's just gonna slide. So this is the dynamic pigeon exercise. I'll show you from a few different views if you have a hard time seeing it from this angle, don't worry. And then I'll give you a couple coaching tips. So from the back, this is what it looks like, watch. Then I bring my leg back as far as I can. You'll get a nice stretch in your hip rotators. Now, what's key is a couple things here. The whole time I want to keep my shoulders flat, meaning as I go this way into the stretch, my shoulders are going to want to rotate like that. I want to keep them flat, meaning parallel to the floor and even hand pressure. What I mean by even hand pressure is as I go into the stretch, my body's going to try to get me out of the stretch because your body tries to take the path of least resistance and it's going to want to turn you like that taking pressure off this hand. This is no stretch. If I get here, keep even hand pressure, then I get a really nice stretch. So even hand pressure throughout and pretend like somebody's sliding your leg back and then gradually come up out of it. Really nice full range of motion in your hip rotators while you're gaining some strength throughout it because you have to use this hip musculature to come out of this position. So these are what I call hip rolls. 
sort of as the name implies, you get in this sort of yoga lunge position. Let me show you from the other side. So you want to have a long body. Try to get, think chest up, hip down, not knee down. Try to get as long as you can here like yoga. This foot, this foot outside of your hands like so. Now watch what I do with my hips. I just roll to the ridges of my back foot and I want to get my pelvis rotating as well. Big roll. Let me show you from the other side. Here, chest up, hip down, roll. So you should feel starting a nice stretch in your hip flexor and in the hamstring and glute of the up leg. And now we're just kind of moving that stretch around the anterior part of the hip as I roll my pelvis. Really nice variation on a comic, <laughs> really nice variation on a common active or dynamic stretching exercise. So this is the lateral squat with a reach through. So this is the lateral squat with a reach through. First off, I want to dive between my legs, stretching my back, and then watch what I do. Then I bring my arms out as I do a lateral squat. So when my legs get straight, I reach again through, and then when I go to the other side, I reach towards you as I drop down. So a few things. Let's start with the lateral squat first. A few cues here. Feet should be both parallel, nice wide stance, and your feet stay flat the entire time. So if I'm lateral squatting to this side, this knee should be straight and that foot should be flat. I don't want to see everything bow in that way. So done by itself, the lateral squat looks like this. Now, when I add the reach through, I want to stretch my back. This is not a loaded exercise outside of gravity. So I want to stretch my back out. So when I'm stretching, I'm rounding my back, allowing it to flex. That's a good thing, reaching through your legs. And then watch, I sit down. So it's like a squat position. So when my leg straightens, I go through and then here. Here, here, has a nice flow to it. So I'm getting some of the inner thigh, groin area, and getting low back end by keeping this foot straight and rolled. Uh, from rolling, I'm getting some peroneal stretch as well. So you got two options with this lunge. If you're a little more advanced, you can do it as a forward lunge, throw a little hip flexor stretch into it. If you don't have any knee issues, or you don't have a problem coming out of that. If you have a problem coming out of that, and you're a little weaker, then you just go into a reverse lunge. Keep in mind, we're just warming up here, so we want to get your, your knees used to moving that way and dealing with a little extra force so you can take on the harder workout later. So a couple cues. Whether you're going forward or backwards, I'm going to reach with the opposite hand of the front leg, and I want to go long and then across my body this way. So if you're looking at me this sideways, it's here, like this. Here, get a big stretch and reach, and try to actually touch the back knee to the floor. That just gauges your range of motion every time. Make sure you get as much stretch as possible. So we're going to finish the warm up with a prisoner squat jump. Prisoner just means hands interlaced behind the head. And the reason why we're doing that for a lower body warm up is because taking away the arms helping means you have to use leg drive more. Plus, it tends to keep your torso a little more upright, which reduces the back involvement a little bit. So it forces your legs to do most of the work. And if we are trying to, what some people would call potentiate the neuromuscular system to work on a little bit of light power before we go into our lifts, also good for general athleticism, then this is an, a way to ensure that the lower body is doing all the work for us. That said, there's nothing wrong with using your arms if you think that makes better sense for whatever you're warming up for, such as maybe Olympic lifts where you're incorporating your upper body with your lower body, then I would use the arms. But if it's a lower body, more specific lower body warm up, then my go-to is squat jumps with hands behind the head. If you enjoyed this information, hit that like button to let us know. Plus, if you never want to miss another T Nation video again, hit subscribe and that little notification bell right next to it.